Up to 100,000 people are tonight defying the Burmese military to march in protest through the streets of Rangoon. Earlier, military trucks had patrolled the streets, warning people not to repeat yesterday's unprecedented turnout. Fearing a crackdown, world leaders have urged restraint. China has called for stability, while the U.S. has announced plans for fresh sanctions. Day after day, the protests are swelling. Just 24 hours after 100,000 people took to the streets, the crowds are gathering once again. And it's not just the monks now. Onlookers have left the sidelines. Together, they're vowing to bring down Burma's repressive government. In our country, the monks are the highest moral authority of the uh, society. And then when the monks take... Uh, the leading role, you know, uh, 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 in the movement that and then people would follow. So far, the protests have been peaceful, but tensions are rising. Using loudspeakers, government officials on trucks have travelled through Rangoon today, warning against more protests. Yet it seems the monks won't be deterred. If the government is not willing to compromise with, the, with us, I mean, with the politicians or with the people itself, then there's no other options. The monks have vowed to keep up the fight until there's a revolution. But in a country run like a police state, how long can the fragile peace last? This is the last time the Burmese defied the generals. In 1988, the army crushed a student uprising, killing 3,000 people. Opponents of the military regime hope it'll be different this time. Analysts say the generals are only showing restraint because of the influence of Burma's closest ally, China. It's a valuable trading partner and does not want to see trouble on its doorstep so close to the Olympics. Tonight, Beijing has called for stability, but the foreign minister wants it to go further. I think the voices that the Burmese military leadership hear the loudest are the voices um, of China and India, much more than the voices of ASEAN and they certainly don't focus very much on the voices of Western countries. The world is now waiting and watching to see if the generals will snap again. The US is warning against a crackdown. President George Bush will soon address the United Nations to announce fresh US sanctions against Burma. That will see visa bans of key officials and their families. With journalists barred from Burma, pictures like these are being posted on the internet but can international pressure stop a crackdown? The regime in Burma, they control absolutely everything. They can do anything they want at any time. Analysts have described ruling Burma as holding a tiger by the tail. The tiger may be biting back, but the generals have not yet lost their grip. Ashley Neem, World News Australia. Well, Trevor Wilson knows Burma as well as anyone. He's a former ambassador there and currently Burmese specialist at the Australian National University. With talk of monks leading a saffron revolution in Burma, I asked him how serious a threat this is to the military regime. I think it's very much uh, something different that they haven't faced before, which is uh, very, very widespread popular sentiment being expressed uh, mainly through the the Buddhist monks. Let's talk uh, about that. How much different, how much authority, moral authority do the monks bring to this? Well, the, the monks have a great deal of moral authority because they they come from uh, a, a religious, certain religious background, but they are also very much of the people. Uh, they are very close to the people. They would see ordinary people every day they would normally participate in solving the people's problems, helping them with their, their family situation, uh, moral, political, economic, social. Uh, they play a, a very large role. So they are a very important uh, phenomenon in society there. So because of that, you would view these protests differently to those in 1988, which of course we saw the, the military regime put down. Well, they are different in, in a number of ways, but the other way that they're different is that so far this set of protests and demonstrations has been extremely peaceful uh, and the authorities have stood back by and large. There have been some isolated uh, incidents of violence, but by and large the authorities have stood back and let the protests continue. But how long they will 
allow this to go on is unclear. That, that of course, is the key. Now, the world is waiting and watching to see if this does end violently, but we know that Burma is a, is a country and a regime which, which revels almost in being seen as a, a hermit kingdom. Just how much influence could the outside world have? Well, that's a very good question, and uh, I know Alexander Downer was uh, saying this morning that he didn't think that uh, the military regime really listened to outside voices very much. Uh, and of course, uh, Alexander Downer has been one who's tried to influence them in the past. Uh, they are rather isolated, but they're not entirely isolated. And in my experience, they do listen to uh, the international community, where, particularly where mm -hmm. we're talking about international standards, international norms, even human rights. Uh, these are things in which they, they do make an effort. Well, China, of course, is one country that Burma may indeed listen to. How much influence could China bring to bear? And, of course, it, it wouldn't want to be seeing bloodshed on its own doorstep. China has a very wide-ranging uh, set of interests there, uh, and it certainly doesn't want what it regards as a, an unstable regime on its border. It would much rather see a country there that was well-managed and well-run, politically, economically and socially. And so they have actually been urging the government, the military government, to get on with the job of national reconciliation. Trevor Wilson, appreciate your insights. Thank you very much. Thank you.